What does gaming sound look like? With the JBL Quantum Range, it looks like this. JBL has engineered the most accurate spatial audio in the game. JBL Quantum Surround Sound uses individualized algorithms to keep you fully immersed and equipped to win. Boom microphone for epic clarity plus echo noise suppression delivers supreme voice fidelity. Lightweight, durably designed premium memory foam ear cushions. Perfect for epic gaming sessions. JBL's Quantum Sphere 360 degree surround sound and integrated head tracking sensor more accurately position sound in the game. A true competitive advantage. JBL's Quantum Engine powers a proprietary PC software suite for personalized surround sound, mic, and light customization. Active noise cancelling eliminates unwanted background distractions for full focus. Game chat features developed for the most popular chat app in the world, Discord. All gaming platforms compatible. PC, Mac, Xbox One, PlayStation 4, Nintendo Switch, Mobile, and VR. Dare to listen. Hey guys, Mark here from Ratings.com, and today we're comparing the HyperX Cloud Flight to the SteelSeries Arctis 7. They are both decently affordable wireless gaming headsets with a casual design that you can use outdoors. They also come with excellent boom mics for voice chats and multiplayer games. However, both headphones are primarily made for PC and PS4, so they won't be the ideal choice for Xbox One owners. So should you get the HyperX or the SteelSeries, and are they worth it? Well, in this review, we'll compare the design, sound quality, isolation, and microphone, as well as the active features and connectivity options. But as always, let's start with what's in the box. So inside the HyperX box, you get the Cloud Flight headphones, a micro USB charging cable, a 1.8 TRS audio cable with no inline remote, a USB transmitter dongle, 
the detachable boom mic, and the manuals. You get about the same content inside the Steel Series box, so a micro USB charging cable, a proprietary audio cable that ends in a 1.8 TRS connector, a USB dongle transmitter, and of course, the Arctis 7 headphones. You don't get an additional mic since the mic on the Arctis 7 is not detachable, but does retract into the right ear cup, which is nice. But now let's get the boxes out of the way and compare the design. So starting off with their build quality. And here, the Steel Series have the upper hand. They're a bit better built than the HyperX. They have a nice metal frame that's durable, ear cups that feel dense and well-made, and a cool elastic strap design that's a bit reminiscent of ski goggles. The ear cups are well padded with a nice breathable fabric that keeps your ears relatively cool even during longer gaming sessions. However, they're a lot bulkier and heavier than the HyperX, and their plastic hinge is not the sturdiest of designs compared to the rest of the build quality. Overall though, they feel durable and a bit more premium than the Cloud Flight. On the other hand, the HyperX have a more conventional over-ear design that will more successfully pass as casual headphones when you remove the mic and turn off the LEDs. The build quality is decently durable, but mostly plastic and not as well-made as the Steel Series, and even some of the other HyperX headphones, like the Cloud Alpha or the Cloud 2. On the upside, the mostly plastic design makes them lightweight, which helps give them a slight edge in comfort. Here, the lighter frame of the more traditional headband design of the HyperX makes them a bit more comfortable for most listeners than the Steel Series, although not by much. They can accommodate easier for different head shapes and sizes, unlike the Steel Series strap design, which feels a bit tight on larger head since the frame itself doesn't expand like typical over ears. The HyperX also have decently spacious and well padded ear cups. They're not quite as comfortable as some of the other HyperX models like the Cloud 2, but overall, they should be comfortable enough for most. The Steel Series are also quite comfortable, mostly thanks to their well padded ear cups. They have a good, breathable cushion fabric that feels nice on the skin. However, like previously mentioned, they are a bit tight on larger heads, so they won't be as comfortable to wear for longer gaming marathons, since you may start to feel a slight pinch after hours of listening. However, this won't be the case for every listener, and overall, they're comfortable enough for most. Lastly, for the control scheme, and here, the Steel Series are better than the HyperX. The HyperX provide a very basic gaming control scheme. They have a volume dial and a microphone button on the right ear cup to mute the mic. They also have a power button on the left ear cup that cycles through the different LED options. So on all the time, or a breathing pattern that flashes the light, and off, which should be your preferred option since it almost doubles the battery life. Unfortunately, that's about it. They don't have a channel mixing dial to control the volume of your chat software and your in-game audio, like the Steel Series. Feedback on the volume dial is also not as good as the Arctis 7. The Arctis, in this case, are one of the more ergonomic gaming headphones that we've tested. The button layout is great. All the buttons and dials feel well-made and provide a satisfying feedback. The volume dial and the microphone button are on the right ear cup. The chat mixing dial is on the left. It's a simple control scheme that will be easy to use for all gamers, but unfortunately, like the Cloud Flight, they do not provide a multi-purpose button to use with your phone. It's not a big deal since they're a gaming headset, but since they can also have a casual design to use outdoors, it would have been a nice addition. So overall, design-wise, the Steel Series are a bit better built and provide more control over your gaming experience than the HyperX. They also look more premium. However, they are tighter on some heads. They're also heavier and bulkier. So if you're going to be using your headphones outdoors more than indoors, then the HyperX may be a better choice for you. Although the mostly plastic design doesn't look as good or as durable. And that's pretty much it for the design. Now let's compare the sound quality, isolation, and microphone performance with sound. Both the Cloud Flight and the Arctis 7 are very good sounding headphones with very little between them. They sound quite neutral overall, but the Cloud Flight tends to be a bit too sharp in the treble range, and the Arctis 7 a bit too boomy and muddy in the bass range. But before discussing their sound in more detail, let's listen to a recording we have made with these headphones so you can get an idea about their sound differences for yourself. Just keep in mind that this is a relative comparison and not an absolute one. So it is good for seeing which headphone has more bass or treble, for example, but you won't be able to judge their actual sound profile. And if you get one of these headphones and listen to the same track that we've used here, you most likely won't hear the same thing. So here, we have the frequency response of the Cloud Flight on the left and the Arctis 7 on the right. 
As you can see, both of them have a pretty extended bass, so they will be able to produce the low thump and rumble common to bass heavy music and video game effects. The Cloud Flight has a couple of dBs more sub bass than the Arctis 7, but this is quite subtle and won't be noticeable to most users. The main difference in their bass is the bigger bump of the Arctis 7 in the high bass region, which adds a bit of muddiness to the overall sound. The same thing is also true about their mid ranges. The HyperX have a 5 dB dip in low mid, which thins out the vocals a little bit, but this tends to create more room for the thump and punch of the bass range to come through. The low mid of the Steel series shows the continuation of the bump in high bass, which adds a bit of thickness to vocals and makes the overall mix a bit cluttered. The treble of both of these headphones is very well balanced, but the Cloud Flight shows a big bump around 10 kHz, which could make them a bit sibilant, that is, sharp and sizzly on S and T sounds. Lastly, these headphones seem to be quite sensitive to positioning, and their bass and treble delivery can be affected by the shape and size of your head. The HyperX is pretty consistent in the treble range, but shows significant variation in the bass range across multiple users. The Steel Series, on the other hand, is less consistent in the treble range, but their bass is more consistent across multiple users, unless they wear glasses. But on the upside, the Arctis 7 comes with a decent EQ, so you should be able to compensate for these variations. Now, for isolation and leakage, we have also recorded the comparison, which we're going to play now. First up is isolation. Looking at the isolation graph, you can see that the isolation performance of these headphones is pretty similar throughout the range. They don't have active noise cancelling, so they don't provide any isolation in the bass range, and they won't be able to block the rumble of a truck outside, for example. In the mid-range, they do an average job, so they can reduce outside chatter a little bit, but may not be enough for loud places. But you can always mask the noise by increasing the volume of your headphones a bit. They perform well in the treble range though, so you don't need to worry about hearing high frequency noises like the sound of a fan through these headphones. Now let's listen to the leakage recording. Again, the leakage profile of these headphones is quite similar, but the overall leakage level of the Arctis 7 is slightly quieter. Neither of these headphones leak much in the bass and treble ranges, but they leak noticeably in the mid-range. So if you don't want to disturb anyone around you, make sure you are not blasting the headphones. But you don't need to worry about the leakage at moderate volumes. Since both of these headphones are made for gaming, we're going to discuss their microphone quality as well. And like before, we have prepared a couple of recordings for you to listen to. First, let's listen to a recording done in a quiet environment. This is a ratings.com microphone test. This recording was made with a microphone of the headphones while placed on our dummy head, with my voice being played through the dummy head's mouth. This is a ratings.com microphone test. This recording was made with a microphone of the headphones while placed on our dummy head, with my voice being played through the dummy head's mouth, this is a ratings.com microphone test. This recording was made with a microphone of the headphones while placed on our dummy head, with my voice being played through the dummy head's mouth. You'd probably agree that both the Cloud Flight and the Arc 7 are great at recording speech. The response is nearly identical up to two kilohertz. Both have a flat and extended bass, which is important for producing a full-bodied sound. Their flat mid-range means speech will be quite natural on them and won't sound too thick or too thin. The treble of the Cloud Flight is hyped by about 5 dB, which makes speech a bit bright, so it won't sound neutral, 
but this may actually help you to cut through the game audio better. The treble of the Arctis 7 though is overemphasized by more than 9 dB, so although this is good for cutting through other sounds, it may be too bright or harsh for some. Also, both the HyperX and the Still series cut off around 6.5 kHz, which is a limitation of their wireless protocol. This means they will lack a bit of airiness to their sound, but this doesn't affect the intelligibility of speech, and some users may not even notice it. Now let's listen to another recording to see how these microphones handle a noisy environment. This is a Ratings.com microphone test. This is for you to see if you could hear me in a noisy environment. This recording was made with a microphone of the headphones while placed on our dummy head, with my voice being played through the dummy head's mouth and noise being played through a speaker about one meter away. This is a Ratings.com microphone test. This is for you to see if you could hear me in a noisy environment. This recording was made with a microphone of the headphones while placed on our dummy head, with my voice being played through the dummy head's mouth and noise being played through a speaker about one meter away. This is a Ratings.com microphone test. This is for you to see if you could hear me in a noisy environment. This recording was made with a microphone of the headphones while placed on our dummy head, with my voice being played through the dummy head's mouth and noise being played through a speaker about one meter away. Again, both of these headphones are excellent at separating speech from background noise and should basically be able to handle all usage scenarios. However, the Cloud Flight achieved a speech to noise ratio of 73 dB, which is by far the highest number we have recorded so far. This is because they come with a powerful noise gate processor that we weren't able to disable. If it was able to turn off their noise gate, they would still perform very well, and probably similarly to the other headsets by HyperX, like the Cloud 2 or the Cloud Alpha. Now let's go back to Mark for the active features. Latency-wise, both headphones do very well. The HyperX have the slight edge, but it's only an eight millisecond difference, which isn't that noticeable, and is within the margin of error of our latency test. The HyperX have 20 milliseconds of latency, they still series 28. This makes them a great option for gaming and watching movies, since you will rarely have any delay between the audio and video, even on high frame rate content. For the wireless range, here again, both headphones do well and should have more than enough range to comfortably game from your couch. The Steel Series beat the HyperX in direct line of sight, but both perform equally well under normal conditions when the dongle is likely to be obstructed. Here, the HyperX reach up to 38 feet, the Steel Series 36, but it should be enough for most use cases and gaming setups. As for the battery life, and here again, both headphones have a similar performance. The Steel Series have the slight edge over the HyperX, they lasted 24 hours versus the HyperX 29.6. However, they have a better power saving feature that will automatically turn off the headphones when they're inactive for more than 10 minutes, unlike the HyperX, which enter a standby mode. Also, if you use the LED lights of the HyperX while gaming, then the battery life will take a serious hit. We tested them with the LED lights fully on, and in this mode, they only lasted about 12.9 hours. But on the upside, both headphones can play passively with the audio cable when the battery dies, and you can use them while charging, which is pretty convenient if you're gaming on your PC or next to a power source. Unfortunately, there isn't much competition for the app support. The HyperX Cloud Flight does not have a dedicated software, whereas the Arctis 7 have an excellent software support via the SteelSeries engine. It's a customizable and easy to use software that provides a great parametric equalizer with presets, DTS surround sound, monitoring, and volume control for the mic. You can also save your configuration under the config tab to quickly switch between different settings depending on the game that you're playing. It lacks some of the fancier auto calibration features for the surround sound like some of the other gaming software that we tested, but overall, it's efficient, easy to use, and well-made, and adds a level of customization that feels lacking on the cloud flight. Lastly, for the connection options, and here the Steel Series have a bit more versatility than the HyperX. Both headphones come with a USB dongle, although the HyperX have a more traditional USB stick, whereas the Steel Series has a dongle that has a bit more connection options. The transmitter will provide audio and charge support for PC and PS4. However, they will not have voice chat when connected to your Xbox One. On the upside, they both come with an audio cable that will provide audio when connected to your console's controller or phone, but only the Steel Series proprietary cable will provide audio and mic support for both the PS4 and Xbox One controller, which is a bit disappointing for the HyperX. So in the end, which gaming headsets do you choose? Well, for purely gaming, the Steel Series Arctis 7 are a little better than the HyperX Cloud Flight. 
The Steel Series have a better build quality and a more premium design. They also have a bit more functions and a slightly better sound that you can EQ thanks to their great software support. Unfortunately, they can be a bit tight on some heads due to their unique headband design. They're also a little bulkier and opted for a retractable mic instead of a detachable one, so they won't look as great when used outdoors. In this case, if you're looking for a headphone for both indoor gaming and casual outdoor use, then the HyperX Cloud Flight will be the better option. The more traditional over-ear design will work for most. They also deliver a sound quality on par with more critical listening focused headphones. Unfortunately, they do not have as many connection options and features as the Steel Series, and the lack of a good software support is noticeable, especially when gaming on PC. They also won't have a mic compatible with your Xbox One, even when wired, which is not ideal for console gamers. And that's pretty much it. You can check out all our measurements on our website. If you like this video, then subscribe to our channel. I'll become a contributor. And thanks for watching. See you next time.